Erica, I'm um, a nurse here and I um, would like to undertake the cardiovascular assessment with you. Would that be okay? Yeah, fine. What do you like to be called? Holly. Holly, okay, Holly, that's great. So I've gelled my hands, I've put on the relevant PPE, um, and I've made sure my equipment, like I said, the scope and stuff is clean. Uh, what should we go for? So let's start off with. I just want to ask you a couple of questions about um, any symptoms that you may have been getting. So um, I'd like to ask about whether you've had any chest pain, um, and if you have, then where do you see the location of chest pain? How long has the chest pain lasted for? What does it feel like? Does it radiate anywhere? Or it, does it start in the jaw? Has it just been in the jaw? Has it just been in the neck? So I want to sort of really crack down on, on the pain. Um, I want to ask about indigestion. Have you suffered from any indigestion, any acid reflux? If so, again, when did it start? How long does it last for? What precipitates it? Does anything help relieve it? Um, I would do the same for breathlessness. Um, I would also um, ask you whether you had a cough, whether it was a productive cough or not, and if it was productive, what type of sputum it was. And again, I'd look at when did it start, frequency, what relieved it, what helped, um, or if any, anything triggered it. Um, we could ask you whether there's been any dizziness or sudden loss of consciousness. And again, taking that into account, triggering agents, how long they last for, things like that. And I would do the same for things like night sweats, fatigue, any leg cramps, especially when you have, when you get up first thing in the morning and you swing your legs around, you get any cramps like that, would you just get cramps lying asleep at night? So basically I've gone through thinking about some specific cardiovascular symptoms that you might present with and try to figure out and get a bit more of a focused idea around what those are. Okay, once I've done that, I'm going to then check your pulse, okay? So I'm going to do your blood pressure. I'm going to do, I'm going to ask for your blood pressure, your rests and um, your sats and all of those, but I'm physically just going to feel for a pulse at this point. And we'll obviously count that for a minute, okay? I'm going to move on. I'm not going to spend a minute counting your pulse. But what I will say is that feels nice and strong. It's nice and regular, good volume. Okay, let's go on to inspection. So, starting with the inspection, we're going to go from head down to toe. So, I'm going to start with your face, and I noticed that you're a good colour, and that there is no sign. You're <laughs> not scraping any face down off. <laughs> and I noticed that your mucous membranes look nice and moist, and that there is no sign of any central cyanosis. Um, well, if I have a little look in your eyes, I can notice that there's no sign of jaundice. I'm also looking at your pupils for any corneal arcus and around your eyes for any xanthesia. Um, so xanthesia would be a sign of hyperlipidemia and corneal arcus can be a sign of hypercholesteremia. Um, jaundice sometimes can be seen with cardiac patients from cardiac heart failure. So I want to have a look at your teeth as well in a minute. I'm just making sure that there isn't any visible sign of caries, central caries, which could lead on to infected carditis. Okay, so we've done your head. Moving down, I'm going to have a little look at your hands. So I'm just going to have a feel for temperature, okay? I'm going to have a little look for swelling. I'm going to do a capillary refill, so one, two, three, four, five. Pull it back and that appears to be normal. No sign of any edema. Let's have a little look at your nails. There's no sign of any clubbing. Clubbing could be associated with chronic hypoxia or congenital, con congenital heart conditions. Um, I'm having a little look for any splinter hemorrhages, which would be striated lines here. No evidence of that. That could potentially be evidence of infective endocarditis, um, but there's no evidence from that. Anything else with the hands? I think that's it. We're going to move down to your feet. And again, I'm checking for the levels of edema, um, making, seeing whether you've, what, what level that is, checking for temperature, okay, um, and that's it really, edema, temperature. If, if the levels of edema were pitting and it was going high, I would also consider checking for sacral edema as well, just to see whether that was present, which it might be in chronic heart failure. Uh, looking at your chest, I'm then wanting to uh, observe your chest for any signs of any scarring. You might have sternal sternotomy scar. There might be evidence of a pacemaker or an ICD in place. 
can also, if I saw a sternotomy, I could have a look at your arms and legs to see if that's where they took away, um, that's where they took the veins for the cabbage. Um, I'm also going to look at the shape. So is there any sign of funnel chest, pigeon chest? It, what shape is it barrel chested? So just to see if there's any sort of issues that might affect the cardiovascular function. Um, okay, moving on from that, I'm then going to go on to palpation. So what I'm going to do is I just want to palpate um, and feel your carotid pulse, your brachial pulse, your radial pulse and your pedal pulse. Okay, so I'm just going to find this. And that's nice and shred and regular and slow. We've already done your radial, but we'll just do it again. Nice and strong. And we'll just do your brachial. And there it is. That's good. And then we'll do your pedal pulse here. And that's nice and sorted. That's good. And I'm going to just compare both. So I'm not actually going to do it, but what I'm going to say is that I would compare both sides. Obviously, I would not do both carotids together. Okay, so I'm make you safe. But I would be looking, comparing light for light, seeing if there's any difference in pulse strength, pulse regularity on either side. Okay, um, now what I'd like to just do is see if I can palpate your apex. Okay, so I'm just going to put my hand just below your breast here, all right? So I'm looking at fifth intercostal space, which I can go down, go across, this first. Two, three, three, four, there we go, there's about five there. Mid-clavicular, so I'm looking into here. I'm just going to gently do that. Can I ask you just to sit forward for me a little bit? Just lean forward a little bit further. Okay, well I can't actually palpate it, but that's not a problem. Okay, we'll have a listen to it in a minute. All right, so we've palpated that, okay. So my next job is I am going to have a listen, okay? So I want to have a listen to your chest sounds, and I'm all, or to your heart sounds, and um, we'll also um, have a listen to your apex beat. Mm -hmm. So for the purpose of this oscopy, I'm just going to demonstrate where I'm going to put my stethoscope for the heart sounds. So I am actually going to go, find my sternal notch, find my second intercostal space, and I'm going to pop my stethoscope there, that's where I'm listening for my aortic valve heart sound. And I'm going to listen for two or three cardiac cycles just so that I'm happy with that I hear my, my heart sounds of S1 and S2 loved up. I'm going to go across opposite, second intercostal space on the left side, and that's where I'm going to hear my pulmonic heart, my pulmonic valve. We're doing exactly the same thing. I'm then going to come down to my fifth, my tricuspid, right was fifth. That's my tricuspid. Sorry, just remembering fourth intercostal space. See, fourth intercostal. So we found second, third. So fourth intercostal space. I'm just going to have a listen again. Mitral valve um, for the lub dub sound. And then I can come across and show you fifth intercostal space. So that's your tricuspid, that's your mitral. My herbs point, I'm going to go. Third intercostal space left side, and the herbs point very much is where it sits in the centre of all the valves, so that's where I might hear a murmur if I'm going to hear one. It's kind of, you can hear quite a good one. You can hear it on the other ones, but that's a good place to hear, especially aortic regurgitation. Okay, now what I'm going to do lastly is I actually want to have a proper listen of your um, natural thing. Excuse me, darling. I'm just going to pop that up into there. Okay, so I've gone fifth intercostal space. And then I'm just going to check the regularity of the pulse. Brilliant. That's it. What I forgot to say is when I'm doing my heart sounds, I'm going to use the diaphragm in every position first. And then I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to use the bell in every position. Okay. That is it.